Governor, thanks so much for joining us. I, I want to get your thoughts on the president's <laughs> new tariffs. The Democratic senator from your state, Sherrod Brown, said the move was a welcome action, that it was long overdue. You have said it would invite a trade war. Ohio is obviously a major steel-producing state. Why don't you back this move? Well, first of all, I don't want to disrupt, you know, the bulk of things and have lots of people, either consumers having higher prices or other people losing their jobs, Jake. Look, the trade issue is a very important issue, and I have always believed that the bureaucracy in the way in which we determine whether we're being ripped off or not operates too slowly. And frankly, what the president ought to do, working with the Congress and, out, and outside groups, we ought to modernize the way in which we determine whether uh, the trade agreements are being violated. But just to turn around one day and say, well, for this national security reason, which the Department of Defense doesn't even agree to, doesn't make uh, much sense. And I'll tell you, the way it was handled, it would be like me going home tonight and having dinner with my family and saying, girls, I sold the house today. I mean, it, you just don't do things like that off the cuff. So, um, look, you've got the Europeans threatening us, the president's threatening back. This trade wars and dividing us from our allies makes no sense. Now, look, fair trade is important, Jake. And that's why this whole mechanism of not allowing bureaucrats to slow the process down. And if somebody cheated us, okay, if somebody cheats us, by the time they get called on it, the jobs are lost. So we need an expedited process. That's where the president ought to focus. The president also met with bipartisan lawmakers this week um, when he said this about a new proposal for gun violence restraining orders. Take a listen. To go to court would have taken a long time. So you could do exactly what you're saying, but take the guns first, go through due process second. Now, you have proposed a gun violence restraining order in Ohio, which would allow the restraining order, right. but only after due process, after a court ruling. What do you think about President Trump saying, take the guns first and then do due process? Well, it's not the way we're going to do it. I don't think that's where this would ultimately pass, Jake. Look, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, of argument around the gun issue. What I tried to do out here was to bring those who are very strongly pro-gun with those who they believe in the Second Amendment but think there ought to be limits and come up with a package that we think could pass. It's not enough to just say something. You want to pass something. So I'm optimistic we will. In terms of our gun restraining order, it means if you have somebody in the family who sees trouble in the family, they have an ability to either go to law enforcement or the court in order to get those guns out of that person who's who's having a very difficult time, get the guns away from them. If you're a neighbor or somebody outside, you can go to a police officer who can investigate and then go to the judge. There's got to be speed in this because we don't want people who are emotionally, you know, emotionally in upheaval who could uh, pose a threat either to themselves or to somebody else to be in a position of where they can have a gun. What I hope is going to happen is we will make some steps. And, uh, you know, young people, uh, the millennials, the Gen Xers are saying, look, we've heard enough deliver something, deliver something. We don't want all these excuses, deliver something. And I, frankly, they put it to me every once in a while, and I try to explain to them the politics of why it's so difficult. They don't want to hear it. And you know what? Good for them, bully for them. I love them. I love the way that they're saying, let's do the art of the impossible rather than the art of the possible. And the more they push, the better chance we have of getting something done to have greater gun safety and better protection for everybody in our country. I think on behalf of all members of Generation X, I thank you for calling us young. Um, but I want to move on. Uh, the president has said... Yeah, Jake, you're, you're, you don't fit in that. I'm sorry. You, you just don't... You, you used to be... You look that... You try to look that way just like I do. I'm trying. It just doesn't work. Just trying. Fake news. President Trump has said <laughs> he wants to work with Russia. Uh, but just this week, Putin said he's developed a nuclear missile that could avoid existing American missile defense systems. We haven't heard anything yet from the president. Would you be doing something differently if you were in the Oval Office right now when it comes to Russia? Look, look a number of things. First of all, I do give the Trump administration credit for delivering anti-tank weapons to the Ukrainians. They needed to have it. Secondly, working with our allies, which is why we don't want to have some big trade war over something that really doesn't hold water, uh, we need to, our friends in Europe and us to make sure that the Baltics feel protected. The other thing is cyber. Let me say one thing about cyber, Jay, that, uh, 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 that has really, uh, Jake, has really never been said. The presidents are exploiting the divisions in our country using the cyber warfare against us. In other words, when we fight, they then use 
They use the information to try to divide us further and anger us further. This issue of cyber is a big deal and we ought to have one single cyber command. And the other thing is we're going to have to do detection and unfortunately we're going to have to modernize our forces, which is money we're going to have to spend on defense, more money on defense, some of which we would all wish we would spend at the National Institutes of Health. One final thing about defense. All right, you know, you have to clean up defense. You don't need all this infrastructure for all these bases. All we're doing is taking care of port bar, pork barrel politics at the expense of other priorities while building a strong defense. President Trump named Brad Parscale as his 2020 campaign manager this week. A new report in Politico says that you are one of three potential Republican challengers that the White House is keeping an eye on. What do you make of you being singled out as a threat to the president's reelection? Uh, I, I, it's the first time I've heard of it, and it doesn't mean much to me. Look, uh, I'm going to be out of being governor here soon. Uh, I hear applause in the background. Uh, I'll be out. I don't know what I'm going to do, but all options are on the table, both for me in my private, my professional life. But I want to keep a voice because I think it's important, whether it's trade, immigration. And by the way, have we forgotten the dreamers, the DACA, the young people who came here? They're not even in the news anymore. And I don't I can't believe Congress is Congress got to do something on guns. And you know what? I think the president will sign something. If he doesn't, send it to him anyway. I mean, the deal isn't you ha don't ask permission. You, you legislate, you get it to the president, you see what he does. I believe he'll sign some really good, strong, common sense gun legislation. Uh, send them to dreamers. We can't be taking these kids that have been, or young people who have been here, some of them for 20 years, and ship them out of the country mm -hmm. for political reasons. So, Governor, I mean, it's like everything falls off. The, the agenda moves so quickly, we can't stay focused on anything, and that's not very helpful to us. You said you're keeping all your options open. I'd asked a question about you possibly running for president in 2020. You said you're keeping all options open. Senator uh, Jeff Flake said he thinks there should be a Republican challenger to President Trump in 2020. Without getting involved in, in whether or not it's going to be you. Do you think a Republican opponent could win a primary fight with the president? Oh, come on, Jake, we don't know what's going to happen next week. I, I, that's not, you know, all I am doing is making sure that both now and when I'm out, that I can have a voice that can help the country, that can bring it together. That's all I'm particularly interested in at this point. And if I go any farther than that, Jake, I won't be able to get in my house tonight. My wife will have it barricaded. <laughs> so I I'm not going there. I appreciate But you the listen, this show's been so calm, and now all of a sudden you got to throw a couple hand grenades in there, right, to stir everybody up. Eh, You're I like tired, to, Jake. I like, Don't stay so late at the gridiron. I, I, like, I like to mix it up. <laughs> Governor Kasich, always good to see you. Thanks so much. Jake, you're the best. Thank you. All right.